Hi everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Fargo 4 Show. I am Trevor Peterson, your host, and we're pleased to be joined this week by force forward Austin Pooley, who we'll get to in just a second. The force in the past two weeks played four games. Uh, they went 2-1-1, one, and one. we'll talk about those games in a second, but let's talk with Mr. Pooley as first. Austin, welcome to the show. Thanks uh, for having me. You bet. You were with the Omaha Lancers of the USHL last year, got traded in the offseason to the Force. Last year with Omaha, you only scored one goal and had eight assists. This year, you're leading the team in scoring, or in point, tied for second in points, leading the team in goals this year with four for the Force. Just tell me about the difference between your first year in the USHL to the second year with the Force. You're tearing it up. Uh, I think... Last year when I came in, I was probably a little young for the league. I probably should have went back and played one more year, but, I mean, it's every kid's dream to play in this league. Sure. So if I had said I had the opportunity, I might as well take it. Um, so I went in, and I was a bottom six forward there, and my job wasn't to score goals. My job was to get the puck in, create energy, get to the net, um, and that's what I had to do to play every night. So that's what I wanted to do, and I uh, was just trying to win a championship there. So that was my role. So I think the biggest difference between last year and this year is probably my role. And uh, just more confident, um, and that starts in practice. You know, doing well in practice, it leads right over to a game, and it just like a snowball, it just keeps going and going. Have you, how pleased with you, or how pleased have you been with what you've been doing this year? I mean, six, uh, six points, four goals, two assists. Have things just felt much more comfortable, much more easy for you this year? Oh, yeah, I just, um, you know, just older. I had a really big off season. I worked really hard mm -hmm. in the weight room and uh, on the ice, and uh, I was pretty prepared when I came into camp this year. I uh, was excited for kind of a fresh start. Um, didn't know what to expect, but uh, yeah, I just worked really hard. And um, Now you're from Dublin, Ohio. I am, So yes. tell me a little about your thoughts of uh, being in uh, Fargo, North Dakota with the Force. Uh, I'm surprised that NDSU football is as big as it is because obviously Ohio State football is, mm -hmm. is huge down there, you know, the Big Ten. And uh, but yeah, I'm surprised at how big. I thought it was, I didn't know there was football up here, to be honest with you, but it's pretty big. Well, Force hockey is also very big. And uh, tell me a little bit about what you think is your biggest strength on the on the ice, Austin. What, what's your, the best thing that you bring to the table? Uh, I think I have really good straightaway speed. Um, and uh, I think I see the ice really well. I'm, I'm a big presence on the ice, can be physical, protect the puck well. Um, with that being said, though, there's a lot of things that I can work on and get better at. So what's the thing? What, what's the biggest thing that you, I mean, and how much? can you improve on something throughout the season? And what's the biggest thing that you want to try to do with that? Uh, you know, my shot, just trying to get my shot better. I mean, if you have a good shot, you can score a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something I worked a lot on in the off season. Um, just my skating, you know, you can never be a good enough skater. Um, and then just getting better with the puck, being a little more savvy with the puck and making some stronger plays, working on my hands a little bit more, stuff like that. Now, uh, we were talking a little bit before we started taping here. you got a pretty good family background with hockey. T talk a little bit about that in the state of Ohio. Yeah. Um, well, my dad grew up in uh, Ontario, Canada, um, in a small town it's called Exeter, about 5,000 people. Him and his twin brother grew up there, and then uh, they got the opportunity to go to and play at Ohio State. Uh, and they were all both All-Americans there, and my uncle's jersey is actually re retired there. Um, and they both signed contracts with the Winnipeg Jets and uh, played – Played for them for a bit. They were up and down, and then my did they dad, both play for them at the same time? Yeah, you know, the they did actually. They, nice. they were on the same line almost all the way through their that's hockey That's pretty unique. Huh? Yeah, that's kind of, I bet they got some good memories. They were, that. yeah, and twins too. Um, but uh, yeah, my dad and uncle were both very fortunate. They won a Calder Cup with Winnipeg's uh, farm team, so that was a pretty special moment for them. Um, and then after that, they um, got married and settled down and had me, I guess. So all right, well. The hockey uh, genes continue with Austin Pooley. So now as we talked uh, to open the show, the Force in the past two weeks had played four games. They went 2-1-1. One, one. So let's do a little recap of these past two weeks with the Force with the help of Austin. Uh, the first game was the first game in, of three games in three straight days for the Force. They hosted the Lincoln Stars for back-to-back -back games at Shields Arena. Uh, it was in the second period of the first game, 1-0 Force, when Zach Yon bangs home the rebound after the shot by Dennis Smirnov. That made it 2 nothing Force. Then, Lincoln would answer, though, later. Watch this fantastic play. Von Ungern Sternberg August. That's a great name, and here's a great pass on his belly to Miguel Fiddler. 2-1 uh, Force at that point. It was 2-2 two -two after 2. It went back and forth from there, and then in the third with four goals scored, it went to overtime, tied at 4, where Mikey Isamont from the Force on the power play gave the Force the win. 5-4, the Force get it in overtime. Isamont with the goal at 257. Austin, how big just to start the homestand uh, with a with a win. Oh, huge! I mean, and to do it in that way, too yeah, dramatic fashion. Get the get the fans kind of involved, give them a uh, heart thriller there. Um, but it's huge. I mean, especially I wasn't here last year, but I don't think it was the way that people wanted to, wanted it to go. Obviously, but uh, 
to kind of show the fans that like we're for real this year. Like the Fargo Force is back. Like, well, talking uh, about was, that, I mean, you guys only had big. 14 wins last year. You already have six this year, and you're only nine games in. I mean, that just has to be a great feeling. Yeah, it is. I mean, um, we have really high expectations for this year. Um, I think one thing that really fuels our team is that going into this year, not many people thought much of our mm -hmm. of our team. I mean, we saw preseason rankings coming out, and we were bottom four on those, and and I just don't think that people really believed in our group. And I think that was one thing that every time we step on the ice is that kind of is like we play with a chip on our shoulder, mm -hmm. like we're going to show you, like. That kind, of, that kind of mentality. Well, it's serving you guys well so far. So then next night on, on Saturday or Friday, the Force came back with the same uh, uh, Lincoln opponent there against the Stars. And uh, this one was a little bit different. The Force donning their orange, white, and black unis, very Halloween-like, appropriate. Scoreless through two periods, so we go to the third. Lincoln's Blake Christensen with the wicked wrister. That put it one nothing Stars. But 49 seconds later, Fargo's C.J. Hayes. Great work in front of the net. Scores it 1-1. Let's take a look at this replay a little, Austin, as with CJ working in front of the net. Yeah. Good effort to get to the net there. Win that puck battle. Good things happen when you go to the net, right? That's right. Now, some nice defensive work kept it tied here. Take a look at this. Lincoln's Patrick Polino with the nice breakaway chance, but Matthias Israelson and Justin Beaudry team up to stave off the goal. Look at Beaudry yeah. sweeping it away as it's just about to cross the goal line. It would go to overtime for the second straight night, and this time Lincoln would come on top as Dominic Saka would slip one through uh, past Israelson there, off the rebound, stops the first one, but able to slip that one through, and Lincoln comes up with the with the uh, two to one overtime victory in that one. Sacco scoring at the 306 mark. So one overtime win, one overtime loss for the Force in their first two games. Now the next night, Saturday, the Force would play again, third game in three days, down in Sioux Falls versus the Stampede, and it was a two four to one loss. The Force were outshot in that one, 38-15. So their record after that four one loss was five. Two and one. What do you what do you remember about that Sioux Falls game, Austin? Oh, uh, you know, I think it was a kind of a uh, character building game for our group. I mean, um, they just came out really physical, and we kind of backed down. And I know our coaching staff wasn't too happy with that, um, knowing that we're the better, bigger, stronger, faster team than them. But uh, I think we got scared. Uh, we're kind of intimidated by their building, mm -hmm. all their fans. I think we had a lot of guys that were like, kind of like, whoa. Um, do you guys feel like? I mean, this year, even compared to. I guess you can't really speak about last year, but do you guys feel like this year that you, when you step on the ice, you are one of the bigger, faster, stronger yeah, teams? Absolutely, and I think that started in our preseason training. Um, we were, I think we were working harder than any other team in the league um, and getting stronger, faster, and it just carried over and just building confidence, just like a snowball. And uh, yeah, we like, we like winning, um, but at the same time, it's, it's about the process. It's about getting better every day, um, coming to the rink with that mentality because it's not who's the best team now. It's the best team. Who, it's the team that's best in March and April. Right. Well, you guys are starting off well. Now, the following weekend, the Force had just one game. They hosted the uh, Waterloo Blackhawks at Shields Arena, and this one would go extra minutes as well. Second period now, one nothing Waterloo. Austin Pooley off the slapper from Chuck Bennis. Austin Pooley puts in the rebound, tied it at one, heading to the third. Here's a little replay. Austin, tell me about this. This is your goal. Uh, you know, it was really good. Uh, before this, Dixon Bowen had a lot of really good board work down low, won a couple battles. Uh, got the puck up to, I think, Chuck Bennis, who made a really strong play to the net there. Um, and you just crashed, huh? And I just crashed the net, found the, it in. Yeah, found the rebound. Um, All right, we go to the third period now. TJ Rue on the power play flies in, and he gives the force a 2-1 lead with that goal. Yeah, that was a, a huge power play goal. Our power play's been struggling a little bit. Um, Another look at it? Yeah. Been struggling a little bit, and it was just great to get a power play goal there. Huge, huge momentum change for our team there. But Waterloo would send the game in overtime, scoring with 15 seconds left with an extra attacker. So then it went to a shootout. And after stopping the first Waterloo shot, Kyle Sylvester with a great move for the Force with the first uh, shootout goal there, one nothing. Then it was uh, then it was Waterloo's chance, and Matthias Israelson just like he came up with the first one with another just really patient save right there. Great work. So he stones the first two shots, and then Dennis Smirnov with a chance. For the force to get him the win in shootout. And look at this fantastic nice. move. Backhand, five hole. Filthy. That was really nice. 2 nothing. Force win the shootout and come up with a 3-2 victory overall. So the force with a nice weekend, or uh, the only game in the weekend, their second shootout win of the season. And you're now 3-1 and one in games that go the extra time. Austin, tell me a little bit about that. You guys seem to, I don't know if it's like going extra time or, or whatever, but you guys are having some pretty good success so far. Yeah, I think for, I think overtime really benefits our game. Uh, four on four, there's a little bit more speed, a um, little bit more open ice, and I think we got a lot of guys that can skate and have a lot of skill. And then in shootouts, we got guys that can, like I said, are really skilled and can put the puck in the net. And then we got, obviously, 
Matias, who is like a brick wall back there for us. He's done really well. So let's take a look at the standings now. After the past two weeks, the Force are in tied for second place in the USHL's Western Conference. Sioux City leading things with an 8-1-1 record and 17 points. But the Force right there, 6-2-1, tied with Tri-City and Des Moines with 13 points. Tell me a little bit about just being 6-2-1 uh, uh, and one early on in the season and looking up those standings, seeing your name right, right near the top. Yeah, it was... Our coach was talking to us about it right away. Like we got to get a good start. We got to get the fans back involved in this this program. And uh, so we took that to heart and we set a goal to to have a really good start. And I think we've done that. Um, but as you can see, the Western Conference is so tight this year that you just can't take a weekend off. I mean, everyone's good, so you can't take anyone for granted. Every night's a big night, and you got to bring your best game. Well, now you and the Force are going to have their work cut out for them in the next couple weeks as well. The upcoming schedule for the Force looks like this: the next weekend, Friday and Saturday, and Halloween. And the next night, you're at Dubuque, who's 5-3-0. And, oh. and then the following weekend, the Force are on the road. At Des Moines, who are 6-2-1, side with you guys in the Western Conference. And then Saturday night, November 8th, you guys are at Cedar Rapids, who is 7-1-0. and oh. They're first in the Eastern Conference. So a big uh, next uh, few games for the Force. You're going to be, really be tested. Yeah, huge. Uh, Dubuque's got a really good club this year. And then I think Sioux City, I think we play them later this month, as well as Cedar Rapids. Uh, both really, really good hockey teams in the East. Um, so we got to bring our best game against them. Uh, but I think we're just focused on getting better today, getting prepared for the first game in Dubuque this Friday. So it should be a really good test for us. And now we should mention that all Friday and Saturday home games this season for the Force, there's a viewing party at the Spice, at Spicy Pie Pizza in West Fargo. It's free. So if you want to catch some Force action when they're on the road, Spicy Pie Pizza in West Fargo, all Friday and Saturday road games this season. And of course, for tickets for all home games throughout the season, go to FargoForce.com as well. Uh, Austin, thanks for joining me. Nice job today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. And we'll see you next time on the Fargo Force Show.